Hey, hey, happy Well That's Good Wednesday. Hope y'all are having a great week. If you've been listening to the recent podcast, we actually had Bindi Irwin on a few weeks ago because she was on my Facebook audio room. Now we have another Facebook audio room with an amazing couple that I get to share with you on this podcast platform. It's Cole and Savannah LeBrant. I'm sure you know about them, but if you don't, they're just a beautiful couple who loves the Lord, loves each other, loves to dance, and I was so excited to get to have a conversation. Christian actually joined me in this, so it's just fun to get to know another Christian couple who's fun and loves our kids and loves the Lord. So I can't wait for y'all to listen to this conversation. Also, since we had this conversation, they had a major life update and so we didn't even talk about their pregnancy but hopefully we'll have them back on and we can talk a little bit about that hope you enjoyed this conversation with christian and i and the lebrant family i'm excited for another chat on behind the screens this is going to be so much fun uh, today i don't know if you already saw on my instagram or maybe you saw it promoted on facebook but we are getting to talk to two incredible people um cole and savannah but before we welcome them on the show i actually have another guest joining me my husband christian huff bum, 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 bum. What, what what was that? <laughs> that was like the most epic drum roll you could have gotten. It almost was. Um, it actually was. Okay, so Christian's joining us, and I just saw that the LeBrant family has now joined us. Welcome, guys. I'm so excited to talk. Woo! Hello. This is Cole. I'm with my wife, Savannah. I'm Savannah. I'm Cole. I'm Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are awesome, and I'm so stoked to talk to y'all. So we've actually met, but we met like kind of randomly, like outside of church one day. I remember. Yep. And we yeah. kind of like chatted throughout the years of seeing y'all at Passion, but we never really had to like have, we've never gotten to have like a full on conversation. So I'm stoked. I know. We're excited. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. I know. I mean, uh, we just talked like off screen and Christian and I have become like DM buddies where we DM each other a lot. <laughs> we, <laughs> have, we haven't yeah. actually had like a we, real conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I ever have like one steady like person that I DM with and you've become that person. So. Cole, thank thank, you. I'm thank I'm thankful that you haven't just left me on red yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. It's coming. Thanks for being a good friend to my husband, Cole. That's really sweet. Um, yeah. yeah. Good job, honey. Thanks. <laughs> well, for the people who maybe don't know you, which I'm sure most of them do, but if you don't know Cole and Savannah, kind of give us a little screenshot of what y'all's life is all about. Mm, man. Do you want to take it? No, you take it. You want me to take it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so essentially how I would describe ourselves as someone that knows us, it's funny because like people will ask us like what we do for work. And the best way that I explain it is like, I, I, I tell people that we like run a social media business. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> just, just so it sounds a little more professional than YouTubers, YouTubers. you know, YouTubers. Um, especially if it's like somebody that's older, but I'm assuming that we have more younger listeners who will know what YouTuber. So we did do the YouTube thing. Um, we've been doing social media since we, met essentially um we didn't expect it to go anywhere but we started dating and um started just uploading some some content yeah, and we started, we started just like making videos just to look back on because we were doing long distance mm -hmm. and we thought it'd be fun just have videos to look back on and then it just kind of happened we got married had some kids and it's turned into a family thing so i guess the best way to think of it is like any kind of family tv show that you would see on tv but that's just it's on the internet yeah yes I love it. I love y'all's little intro and everything. It really does feel like you're watching a reality TV show, but it's like y'all's sweet family and it's so good. Mm. So yeah, you can say you're YouTubers and it's epic because <laughs> y'all do a great job. Um, and y'all make the cutest dance videos and your family is just so much fun to follow. I've been watching y'all's videos for a long time, actually. Like I remember when y'all were dating and y'all did like 10 kisses or something and oh, it was like hilarious i know no <laughs> i go way back with y'all I really yeah I love uh, it. that's so fun so i actually don't know the story of how y'all met so how how did y'all meet mm. Ooh, should i tell this one yeah you know so at first he sent me a dm um and isn't that how everybody meets nowadays yeah he sent yeah, me the same for us yeah. musically but this was back when it was musically days not tiktok so it's funny wow well, so sent me a dm on musically he's like hey do you want to share each other's videos vine just died so i need to reference I was vine, <laughs> vine died i was trying to he's collaborate trying to get onto a new platform so he's dm me strictly business 
strictly business. Strictly business. <laughs> but I responded saying like, hey, of course, totally, you're hilarious. I like went and watched all of his videos and thought he was like the funniest guy. Me and my sister, I remember just sat there for like an hour and a half watching how funny he was. And then <laughs> so I sent him a message saying, of course, totally, let's do it. But he never responded back. And he says that he did, didn't even know how to check his messages. So he never even saw that I responded. Like he had no idea how to work the app. I knew how to send messages. I but I, I sent him a message with my number saying like, hey, yeah, here's my number. Um, send me a video you want me to post and I'll send you one that you could post. But That's then awesome. that never happened. So I knew of him from that moment. We met each other at the Grove randomly. I saw him just walking by. Oh, and a reference. Wow. I was living in Alabama going to college. She was living, living yeah. in California. So we really should have never met yeah. as far as. So, but he, wow. was on a trip. he was on a trip for the summer. Walking at the Grove, I saw him at the corner of my eye. I know he saw me because we like glanced at each other for a second, but then I turned around because Everly was running off and I had to go grab her. And um, when I looked back, he was gone. So I was like, dang it, I wish I would have said hi, but my sister was actually about to head out. So I said, if you run into Cole on your way out, send him over, like tell him to come say hi. So she happened to, which is funny, I guess she was walking right at, past Barnes and Noble as you were walking out, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and sent him over. And then from there, it was just history. history. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And the, the Grove's actually like a big place too. So I know. It's pretty it's random crazy. to run into. For those who don't know what the Grove is, it's like in West Hollywood ish area. And like mm -hmm. it's an outdoor, basically like lots of stores, lots of restaurants. Yeah. And so that would be a very random per place to like meet the love of well, your life. That's and I live like two hours away from it. So like I'm never over there. And so wow. I was there at the same time he was. It's just crazy. Total, totally a God thing. Mm -hmm. But that is but a yeah. God thing. Right yeah. place mm -hmm. at the right time. Yeah. That's awesome. I always say that to people when people are like, oh, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm like, you know, I really don't even know that if we like, if we look, we could find it. It's almost like you just have to trust God and like be available and be willing. And like all of a sudden you look up and the person's right in front of you because yeah. like you wouldn't look in the place that God normally shows it to you. You know, like if you were looking, you might not be like at the Grove that day at Barnes and Noble or whatever it is, like with your daughter, you know, you yeah. would think like looking would be more like dating apps or going to like the single church group or whatever. But it's really in those random moments that God, you know, just kind of puts you at the right place at the right time. It's like trusting him for that. So that is um, really, really cool. So I'll have to say, like, dating back to whenever I was in high school, there was kind of like this question that everybody asked, and it was like, who are you a bigger fan of, Justin Bieber or One Direction, right? It was like this, who's, <laughs> who's your fan? But whenever I was in high school, Dim White Boys was thrown into the mix. It was oh, like, God. are you Justin Bieber? Are you One Direction? Are you Dim White Boys? Let's go. And so, Let's go. Uh, wow, you made it. I know. I'm you assuming, really you, said, I'm assuming you said them white boys. Oh, oh every every time, every time. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's you funny. I, I wasn't even a dem white boys fan. Oh. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Did you know about no. dem white boys? No, I, I had no idea. Boys. I've never seen them. I, I didn't even have a Vine, so I had no idea. I know it's gonna come out one day. That, like I find all these like old signed like posters and hats, and I yeah. see just those. Like, I was a just super soccer. secretly the number one fan. <laughs> Yeah, one day you'll find it all. No, that's hilarious. Christian said he was also a Dem White Boys fan. Cole. That's oh, so man, funny. Go. <laughs> so y'all go way back. Well, that is hilarious. So you didn't know anything about them. So did no. you just happen to you just happened to see him on was it musically you said? Yeah, I just saw him on musically and that's that's it. I just saw his videos and thought they just kind of lived on there and he was just a new guy trying to put videos on musically <laughs> and I was just like, sure, you're hilarious. Let's get you some followers <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome oh my gosh i love it so one thing that i love about your family is that y'all all are really good dancers but more than that like you just have a lot of fun together um and you create space to have fun like i saw um your video even with you y'all like saying it was a years ago but y'all saying like yes to everything that everly really asked for a day and then vice versa and like you it was so hilarious because you're in target and you're just like being so silly and laughing at yourself and all that stuff so i know that's like a really big thing about your family what do you think like the importance is of having fun and like how do y'all carve time out to like make sure that you're doing stuff fun as a family is that something that you feel like y'all really value or does it just kind of happen 100 percent, i value that more than anything so i i feel like i am like our big schedule person <laughs> and so i'm <laughs> always trying to like figure out like for me a big thing is like always giving our kids one-on-one -on -one time too like getting the family time but like making sure we have a posy date day or a 
Everly date night or, you know, even just like taking Zealand with me just to the park by ourselves. Like it's something as simple as like it can even be just going to ice cream for 10 minutes. But I feel like getting those special like one-on-one -on -one times with the kids, especially now that we're starting to have so many is like so mm -hmm. important. <laughs> too. <laughs> that's awesome. But, but yeah, I, we value, value we value family time more than anything. So that's that's nice awesome for us. Hey friends, I want to tell y'all about Liberty University where they are training champions for Christ and they've been doing this for a while. This year is Liberty's 50th anniversary, which is so cool because it literally started from one man's vision to establish a university that would impact thousands of lives for Jesus Christ. And that is just what that man did. He actually impacted our family too by his vision because my brother went to Liberty. My brother is currently in Liberty. My sister is taking Liberty online and I I even did a semester at Liberty Online and loved it. It was actually so good for my lifestyle because my life is a little bit busy and it was great to be able to do their online courses. And what was really amazing about it is everything they do is biblically based. And so as I was doing school, I was also learning about the word. I think you love it. Let me give you some more reasons you'll love Liberty. Um, as far as their online program, there's more than 450 online degrees from the associate to the doctoral level. Their tuition rates are in the bottom third of leading online universities. All courses are taught from a biblical perspective, like I said, which really is such a unique thing to have in school. Liberty gives credit for prior learning, on-the-job training, and a variety of certifications. Um, and if you're looking to attend in person, Liberty University is beautiful. It's in Lynchburg, Virginia. I've been several times. They have more than 300 undergrad and graduate degrees, a 7,000-plus acre campus, state-of-the-art facilities. They have so many different student-led clubs. I think it's like more than 120 NCAA. AA Division I programs. Seriously, they have it all. If you're looking for a Christian-based school, this is definitely the one you'll want to consider. Uh, to start your future now, go to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you're a Whoa That's Good listener, you'll get your application fee waived. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this. Friends, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future today. You can definitely see that, and it shows. It's funny that you said y'all, you know, are having so many, because I saw y'all post on Instagram, and you were like, you know, how many kids should we have, comment, whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, do y'all really want to have 12 kids, or is it a joke? <laughs> or, or is that really what we're shooting for here? So so let's go ahead and ask this question. Do y'all actually want 12 kids? Or are y'all like... What, whatever I, 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 would, I would probably cap out at like eight or nine. <laughs> <Savannah>. <laughs> Whenever I met Savannah, she always told me that her favorite movie growing up was Cheaper by the Dozen. And that, that's like always what she wanted. And I thought she was like joking. You know, I'm just like, ah, yeah, I like that movie too. Cool, let's get married. <laughs> and then we get married. She's like, no, I actually think that would be awesome. I'm like, oh. You're like, yeah, oh. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe like Cheaper by like the, the quarter dozen is <laughs> the you know, quarter more, dozen. more my alley. But... <laughs> That's she does want a lot. would be good with four max, max five. I, I now to, to clarify, I'm one of six kids. I love big families. I mean, we go back to Florida for Thanksgiving, and we're around all seventy of my relatives, and we love it. I love it. I yeah. want a big family, but Savannah just wants a really, really, really big family, and I'm like, huh. I don't know. I'm 25 years old, and <laughs> she wants a fourth kid. <laughs> That's awesome. So Savannah, did you grow up in a big family as well? No. Or was it the Cheaper by the Dozen movie that, that did it for you? <laughs> no, it honestly was the Cheaper by the Dozen movie that, that did it too. for me, I swear. What's the other movie where like, the two couples uh, joined? Oh, yeah. They... I, don't, well, I don't know what that one's called, but that one's good too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've, always, I've always loved all the movies that have five million kids in them. I'm just a big baby lover. Like, yeah. if there's a baby near me, I am holding it or talking to it or <laughs> I'm like so baby obsessed, but... That's I feel like awesome. we'll have. I feel like we'll have six. That's, that's awesome. Hey, that's a great number. We have six in our family, actually. Yeah. Three biological, three adopted, and yeah. it's a whole lot of fun. It's it's funny because it's like never quiet at our house. There's you know six yeah, kids, I love and, that. and it's so fun. I know. And Christian's family, he has. It's One him brother. and his brother. It's a smaller family, and it was so funny. Like the first time we went out to dinner, it was like table for like four or whatever five uh -huh. and I was like this is so different this is, but it's so sweet and honestly him and his brother have 
big enough crazy personalities that it feels like a big family. So really it's yeah. like whatever you have, you love, you know, yep. and yep. it ends up being fun no matter what. But we did love growing up with six kids. And I saw somewhere that y'all talk about adopting in the future too, right? Yes, we definitely want to adopt. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's so cool. Well, one thing I saw um, was I watched your wedding video just before preparing for this and just some of the different <laughs> videos I did. And I mean, it's so beautiful and it has like 50 million views or something on YouTube. And for a reason, like y'all's love story is just absolutely beautiful. And you can just see your love um, on display so evidently, but also like your love for Jesus. That's so evident. Um, and so I kind of wanted to give us some space here and y'all can take as much time as you want, but I would love to hear how like both of you came to know Jesus for your own self and like how your faith has really impacted your life. Yeah. 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 That's so good. You want me to start? Yeah, you can start. So I grew up um, in Alabama. So I know you guys are in Louisiana, so I'm sure it's similar culture and, and values and stuff. And I, and I, I grew up going to a uh, Southern Baptist church. It was, I grew up, you know, quote unquote, religious and knowing God and memorizing scripture at VBS and Sunday school and all that kind of stuff. But I definitely didn't like, you know, I was going to love God, but I definitely didn't have like any kind of a relationship with God. It was more of like a do's and don'ts kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, wait until marriage, don't drink till you're 21. But, yeah. you know, the Holy Spirit wasn't really even mentioned and talked about. So I will say once I kind of hit my high school years where a lot of my friends started, you know, doing stuff that I just wasn't comfortable with. I, I went mm -hmm. through this phase where I was like that judgmental Christian where I was yeah. like, oh, they, you know, they're dilly dallying or they're, you know, hooking up with so-and-so or, or they're drinking. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that because the Bible says not to. But I definitely wasn't like leading people to Jesus. If anything, I was, you know, leading people away from Jesus. Yeah. And then I probably had, you know, I, I was there like middle school, early high school. And then I just had this like big come to Jesus moment where I was just like, shoot, like, I'm not like, I don't even really know this guy, Jesus, you know, I'm just like following all these commands and et cetera. And I'm not saying that like, it's bad to, you know, I, I think sometimes you just kind of have to almost get locked into like a mindset of, okay, yeah, I, I am going to try and whatever your, you know, Jesus thing is you know wait till marriage and not drink till 21 and because there's hard seasons where you got to buckle down but um i really came to know jesus probably more so in college like right before i met savannah it was whenever i actually just like fell in love with jesus and had like become content and who i was you know just me with jesus and um and so probably right, right before high school I, it's funny because i don't have like a specific day i feel like so many people have like a day or a date or a specific moment but because i like grew up knowing god and I got baptized probably like two or three times. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, maybe this is like the time that I truly am going to follow him kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have like a specific day, but I feel like in college, just whenever I had like that slowly as I walked, our pastor talks a lot about like people, you know, miracles happening and healings happening and how the Bible talks about two ways that miracles and healings happening and some are instantaneous. Um, you know, you see instantaneous miracles and then others yeah. are as they went. And I feel like my... Yeah. Not, not necessarily that, that my salvation was like a process because obviously, you know, once you're saved, you're always saved. But I feel like yeah. my, my coming Your to relationship, was like, yeah, as I walk kind of thing. That's yeah. so cool. That's actually similar to Christian, like how you kind of really got to know Jesus in college, which I think is so cool. Yeah, I mean, I grew up really just like that. I mean, going to VBS and Sunday school and, you know, memorizing the scriptures. And then, um, yeah, I kind of transitioned from the, judgmental Christian to the, um, you know, I might try out some of the worldly things, quasi Christian, I guess you could say that I thought I might have been. Um, but I mean, yeah, my relationship with Jesus didn't get serious till I got to college. Um, they never really had a relationship. It was just kind of like you said, just the do's and the don'ts. Um, but for me, it was, it, it was gradual within the standpoint of like, you know, I went to a, a Christian youth camp and in high school my senior year and i kind of started kind of winning off some of the worldly things that i become pretty attached to but then when i got to college it was a pretty instantaneous moment where i just really felt um just the holy spirit just convict me in a way that i'd never felt convicted before and repentance became a real thing and um i just truly started following jesus from that but i really grew up like you said i mean just memorizing scripture doing the do's and the don'ts and um you know, it's, it's easy to, to get, um, 
you know, it's really, it's, it's easy to get hooked on that. But then once you realize that there's no relationship with that, then you kind of want to want to figure out a different way to go about this. Yeah, because relationship is like, you know, that that's whenever you experience like all the goodness that, you know, God has for you. And so it's really cool that y'all both said that because I feel like a lot of people think like college is like your years so like go do all the things that you always want to do and go crazy and go wild. And most people like do, but actually like that can also be a really pivotal time in your life where you can come to develop a deeper relationship with Jesus when you're on your own, when you're making your own decisions and start your life on a new trajectory. And so I just think that's always encouraging to hear when people say it was around college, because I think people count themselves out at the college age. And I'm like, no, like this is such a huge time like don't don't waste it you know don't mm -hmm. don't sleep on it like actually wake up and see what god has so that that's awesome so you know what's what's your story Christmas is just around the corner, and if you're anything like me, you're trying to think of the perfect gift to get the ones that you love the most. And I think throughout the past year, we've noticed that we've kind of had to have more distance from each other due to the pandemic and life being crazy and picking back up. And so I have a gift that would really hit home, whether it's a mom, grandma, friend, whoever, I think this gift would be amazing. It's called Aura. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's Aura Smart Frames, and they bring moments to the forefront of your daily life, making it easy to share photos and feel closer from anywhere in the world. Also, this is pretty cool because I always look at Oprah's favorite things so that I can kind of know what the best Christmas gifts are. And this has actually made it on Oprah's favorite things three years running. So pretty impressive. This is a good gift for anyone. It's so easy to use. You just choose your photos and they'll appear on your frame like magic. Wherever it is in the world, no memory cards required. And the Aura app is compatible with both iOS and Androids. There's free unlimited storage. So you can upload 10,000 plus photos and videos and invite as many people as you like into a single frame. There's no hidden fees or subscriptions, which is always nice to know. Aura is so popular that last year they actually sold out at Christmas and and Valentine's Day. So if you're gonna get this, you need to go get it today. I'm gonna give you some details later on a code that you can get. But first, let me just share a few more things with you. The high resolution screen makes your photos look the best and it doesn't look like a screen at all actually. And so great quality, great gift. They make it super easy to control who has access to your frame and you can get it set up within two minutes or less. So if you're like me and technology kind of freaks you out, this will help. The interactive touch bar lets you change photos, view details, and even more than that, which is a tap or swipe. And there are a lot of cool features like auto cropping and auto dimming. So there's never been a better time to buy than right now because like I said, I have a code for you. Take advantage of Aura's best deals of the year with Black Friday and Cyber Monday pricing now through November the 30th. Visit AuraFrames.com now to get this gifting. Like I said, you want to get it now because they will sell out because they will sell out. That's A-U-R-A frames.com. Listeners use code WOE to take off $30 of Aura's best-selling digital picture frames at AuraFrames.com. Go get it today. Yeah, um, I would say I, I mean, I've always, I always grew up going to church as a kid. I, the pastor of our church was like my, one of my dad's best friends. So we always grew up religious and um but then i feel like i kind of got lost like in high school and the very beginning of college just i feel like honestly it was just kind of like toxic relationships that i was in that kind of yeah. drew me away from jesus um and obviously i still always believed in him and i would go to church sometimes but i i was never really like i never really had a solid relationship with him you know mm -hmm. um and i feel like there was just so many things that kept happening that just made me like and then i got pregnant with everly and then i felt like i like there's no way of forgiveness for that but obviously there is and yeah um i just felt bad even going to church being pregnant and 19 years old and not married wow. and just beaten down just from bad relationships honestly just in general and so yeah um also around that time, my parents got divorced. I feel like there's just a lot going on in my life and I just kind of felt bleh. Um, yeah. And then um, right around when I met Cole and people get this confused sometimes by me saying like Cole saved me, but that's not the case whatsoever. I feel like Jesus can bring someone into your life to help you realize, um, yes. faith, you know? Totally. And so, when Cole came into my life, I feel like he gave me a whole new perspective on like 
how I should be treated. And just even as my friend, like just when we were friends in the beginning, just like making me realize what my worth was and that, wow. you know, and so I feel like I kind of got a whole new understanding of like, just guys who love Jesus so much. And I thought how cool, it, how amazing it was. Um, yeah. And it was when we went to this passion conference where I feel like I really like rededicated my life to Jesus was at a passion conference. And Sadie, I feel, I feel like you might have spoke at it, actually. I think I did because I remember seeing that y'all were there. Yeah. And uh -huh. um, I feel like it was in that in that in one of those. Um, who is what's what's the girl's name? The Don, wife. of Don Shuri. Yes. Um, when oh, she's she was awesome. speaking, it was the first time like during worship that I ever like lifted my hands in worship, like just, wow. just seeing the girls I was with do it, like pushed me to and seeing Cole and his friends do it. Like it was the first time I lifted my hands and I just like felt the presence of Jesus like so much like never before. Wow. Um, and I feel That's like so I was like totally just gave my life over to him in that moment at that conference. Um, and ever wow. since then, like everything changed. Um, the way I see myself, just little things in my life that were going on, like none of it mattered anymore. And I completely just gave my life wow. over to him and it was pretty rad. That is so cool. <laughs> that yeah. is rad. That literally gives me chills. Cause I remember the first time that happened for me, I was like 17 at a conference and, um, I was just before I was speaking or anything, I was just going to the conference and, um, I was like, kind of seeing everybody raise their hands and I, I had never done that before. And I was yeah. like, I was looking around, I was thinking like, what are they feeling that I'm not feeling, you know? Yeah. And I remember finally, I was just like, okay, God, like, I'm just gonna like worship you, like heart abandoned, like not even think about anything else or anyone else or what they would think. And like, finally, when I like shut off the noise, like I truly encountered him. And like, yeah, like, it was not like I was trying to lift my hands and just happen out of a true posture of worship, you know, and then yeah. like, I responded to the altar call and like that was like the moment for me and so that's so cool to hear you say and just for people listening like you know maybe you're not a believer you've never come to know Jesus but maybe you're out there and you're you're lost or you're you're struggling and I just you know encourage you like open your heart because all of us were at that point at one time or another in our life and like the reason why we were so drawn to Jesus is because like Jesus in himself He's just love. He's kind. He's joy. He he gives us a hope beyond this world. And so if you're interested in that, I just encourage you to open your heart towards it. Um, so like I said, I was watching your wedding video. And one thing that you said, Savannah, in your wedding video was that like you didn't feel like you could have this opportunity to have a man so godly as Cole to love you because you felt like broken, which like breaks my heart to hear but it's also like I have felt the same exact way in my life like felt broken felt unworthy of love and then like I met Christian who's like so kind and so loving and I'm like oh I don't even know what to do with it you know that kind of thing and like to receive that love is just so overwhelming and yeah. you know it's the love that Jesus offers it's us too so speaking from like your perspective now being loved by Jesus, being loved by Cole and getting past those broken spots. Like what would you say to girls out there or even guys too, who are in that spot of feeling broken and like, I don't know if there's like redemption for me because I did X, Y, and Z. Like what would you say to them now with the perspective that you have? I think it took me a while to like love myself. I feel mm -hmm. like I didn't really love That's myself. True. And I feel like that partly had to do just like, with people that were in my life that that made me feel that way but um I feel like honestly it, it starts there and like the second that I really started to love myself I started to get a deeper connection with Jesus and I started yeah. to realize just the important things but That's I really so feel good. like I feel like there could be so many people in your life that are like that can tell you you shouldn't be doing that or you shouldn't be with that person it's horrible and you know it is you know yeah. you should be doing it and you know you deserve better but for some reason, until, until you truly love yourself, you can't get yourself out of the situation. So preach. That, that is so true. I remember I was going through this time where like, I was kind of, you know, feeling broken and kind of feeling lost. And it was after like, I went through this breakup of like a really toxic relationship. And I remember um, I was going through kind of like counseling, but it was really just with a pastor. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, 
you know, talking about how like, Hey, like you need to forgive this person in your heart so that you can move forward. And like, I, I went through the process of like forgiving him there, that space. And she's like, Hey, you need to forgive these people for like what they did in the, in the process. So I went through that. And then lastly, she was like, okay, now like you need to forgive yourself. And that was like yeah. the hardest part. And I just sat there and I cried and cried because I was like, that, like, that's the hardest thing. Sometimes it's like the hardest thing to forgive yourself, to love yourself through it. Um, But if you can get to that point, then like you open up the door to be loved by others, to be forgiven by others, to be in relationship with others. And so such a great point. Um, I I actually went through the same. I did like an inner healing. Yes. Yeah. and, And that changed everything for me. I mean, I think just, forget that, that was pretty recently too yeah forget forgiving people that that have hurt you is like so big like th- that that was huge for me just like being able to forgive everybody that's ever that has ever hurt me before and made me feel unworthy and then also forgiving myself i was just sobbing the whole time it was same yeah it wow. was intense. yeah it's so intense and honestly i avoided it for a while because i was yeah. like I don't like to cry in front of people. I really don't want to go through this. I really don't want yeah. to talk about it all. But it was like the most freeing thing I've ever done. And honestly, yeah. like, I feel like I walked out of there and to this day walk with a different confidence than I did before. Yeah. And so that's so cool to hear that you did that too. Um, yeah. One thing in your video that stuck out to me that I thought was awesome was that in your sister's talk, she started talking about how like y'all bring out the goofy version of yourselves. And she said like, especially like whenever y'all started dating, cause it was your sister. She was like, I saw such a goofy side of her that I hadn't seen in a while. And I think that is like one thing that you know, it's like the right relationship when you bring out like the best versions of yourself. Totally. And so maybe talk about that for a little bit about just like sides of each other that y'all have seen kind of like, blossom as you've been in a relationship because i know christian and i could say some similar things like things that like we lost like from our childhood self now are like coming back just out of like the love we have for one another does that make sense yeah mm-hmm. you want to start or you want me to go you can go i feel like i feel like you've kind of just always been goofy <laughs> <You've> always, <laughs> yeah, right? well, ours will be different in the sense that like like maybe you I bring do- out a different side yeah, 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 absolutely. Where like I, I didn't grow up with like the same growing up pains that Savannah did as far as like I explained in my coming to know Jesus, I, I was fortunate to not make certain you know, super bad quote unquote decisions that maybe left me super hurt or like that I took away my goofy side. So I was always like really goofy, but with my growing up Maybe I just helped you like loosen up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's all I was gonna get at is like, yeah. like loosen up and like not be like so uptight about certain things yeah. or like you know realize what truly is like so important and i mean she's helped me mature because we literally met i met her at 19 so i was literally still a kid i mean i'm, I'm 25 still am to some extent but mm-hmm. wow well. uh, she she literally just like helped me like i feel turn into a man uh <laughs> like, like, <laughs> in the funniest cool. retrospect where i was just total goofball and i feel like he brought me back down to where we kind of met in the middle self. where uh-huh. she needed some more goofball and yeah. I needed a little less and, <laughs> and we kind of met in the middle that way. That's awesome. We, we kind of did too in similar ways. Like I'm kind of like more, so I'm like very extroverted, like more like to be around people all the time. And Christian's like very introverted and more quiet. And we kind of like made the perfect balance because now he goes out and like likes to hang out with people and everything. And I am like now kind of like, can we just actually chill at the house tonight? Like, it's <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very extroverted at, at home, though. You are like, you're crazy at home. I don't like, even know if, if I can say I'm I extroverted crash. at home, but I'm more, <laughs> I'm more, I'm more outgoing when it's fewer people. It's funny, like, people will see our like some videos I post and be like, like people that know us like christian's like so quiet like but he seems so funny i'm like no he's like the funniest goofiest person i've ever met just at home like just not <laughs> not like in front of everybody and he stays for you yeah he yes. stays for you exactly <laughs> yeah, I, always tell her, I always tell her she should feel super special i do i feel the most <laughs> special i love it um and then i like crash at home so we're <laughs> we're obviously yeah. we bring each other up um love okay it. so one thing is Christian and I just started vlogging, which we had not done before. We do all kinds of other social media, but we hadn't done vlogs. And um, it's been fun. And mainly the reason why we started it is just because we really want to document Honey's life and be able to have that to like look back on. And we felt like we share a lot of like 
work stuff and ministry stuff we do, which is great, but we also want to share like more of our life and our heart and stuff like that. Um, and y'all have like set the best example for that. Like y'all's vlog is so great. And it's y'all have always stayed true to who you are and you've loved your family so well through it all. And so I kind of just wanted to take some time to just get some advice from y'all. So um, I know a lot of people are listening to this, but maybe there's other people out there who are wanting to start vlogging or start a podcast or write a book or put something out there that might seem kind of vulnerable. Um, what's your best piece of advice for starting something like that? Friends, I want to tell y'all about Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really, really simple, which y'all, we all know it really needs to be simple sometimes. We're on the go, we're running around in life, and it's hard to get our daily nutrition when life gets crazy, but this is such a great way to do it. AG1 by Athletic Greens, the category leading superfood product, brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition every single day to your body. To help each of us be our best, AG1 simplifies the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing with all the best things. Just one little packet has everything you need for your nutrition in it that day. Christian's been loving AG1. He loves to have stuff on the go like that, and I do too. And so this has been like a great thing for our family. One tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotics, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. That's pretty legit. Just about every single thing you need. And it fits whatever lifestyle you live. It's lifestyle friendly to literally anyone. So whether you're a keto, gluten-free, dairy-free, whatever free you are, it is good for you. It also contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while keeping a good taste. Pretty impressive, not gonna lie. I think y'all would really like it. That's AG1 from Athletic Greens. Let me give you a little info on how you can get that today. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Vitamin D is something that we all kind of lack. That's something I lack and take every day. So it's so nice that you're going to get a whole year free of that. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try today. Yeah, I mean, mine would be, you know, find why you're doing it. You got to find that, that why. I mean, and it sounds like you guys and with us, it was the exact same thing. We, we wanted these memories of us dating. Like, I knew she was the one right away. So um, once we started our channel, I just thought this would be so much fun to look back on our dating relationship and 20 years never old. And, um, you know, That's even cool. back then, not too many people were making near as much money or didn't even know how much money could be made from it nowadays. And, and I'm not saying that it's even bad for people to go into YouTube at, as a money or side hustle or, or whatever it is because – it's, you know, it, it, it's there. So I'm not saying that's bad, but I think, you know, realizing are you trying to do it for the family memory aspect or are you trying to do it for the business aspect? And then whatever your why is will help determine the approach. So totally. obviously if you're, you know, trying to be the biggest YouTuber and get the most subscribers and the most money, then you gotta, you gotta grind and you gotta hustle and you gotta, you know, treat it like an actual business. If yeah, you know, you're doing it for I, memories, then it's just... I feel like most of the time, if you're trying to do it in that way, it's not really going to come off genuine and people generally it's won't so true. watch it because I feel like they'll sense that, you know? I think it all depends also on, like, the content that you're making. Obviously, yeah. if it's family-oriented, then, yeah, you got, you got to be more cautious with that approach. Mm -hmm. But if you're just, like, a single... Like, I just met up with true. some guys yesterday who are a bunch of single early 20s, and it's, like, obviously they have all the right and all the room just yeah. to grind and work as hard as they can to try and be, yeah. you know, a, as best as they can, as you would, as, as any athlete would or anything else. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah f finding that why and, and staying true to it. And I mean, we've made, you just got to kind of know what comes with it and yeah. that the social media is a mean place and mm -hmm. uh, just the world, <laughs> we live in a mean world, probably meaner than ever right now. And once you start putting stuff out there, you know, something that we weren't prepared for was we were just making fun family stuff, you know, for the most part, seemingly innocent. And um, I think you obviously you make mistakes along the way yeah. that, that you post. and You don't realize how much it's like, oh, well, I made a mistake. And then you, the whole world sees that mistake, especially yeah. if it's family oriented. And it's like, oh, now now they want you dead because of that mistake, uh -huh. you know. And yeah. so wow. I, I would just advise people, like, especially now more than ever, just like be super cautious with what you upload something that I we're trying to, to be better at because we have made our fair share of mistakes. It's like, okay, let's 
not get so focused on the grind of making content or, or whatever it is that we forget, um, you know, the quality or, or just even who yeah, we it's are. Just important things. Yeah. So that's good. What are some things to y'all that are like special to your family that maybe you don't share on, you know, your vlog? Do y'all have, or you don't have to share those things, but do y'all have things that are kind of like, this is like our time, no cameras, no, do y'all have like boundaries in that? Or have y'all gotten kind of to the point where it's like, you, you know, it, it, it's fine if the cameras are there. It's, Cause I feel like with Doug Dynasty, like there's cameras in our house all the time, but then we knew when there wasn't going to be, you know, which is <laughs> kind of nice. But then also we we're so used to it that it didn't really matter, you know, if they were like, we were still the same people that we were with them or without, you know? So what does that kind of look like for y'all? Yeah. I think, I think it's, for for us, I honestly feel like there's never really a camera. It's like that's you know, I, it's like once a week for a few hours there'll be a now. camera now. But we, we we've personally slowed it down a lot just being in the space that we are now with reevaluating what's really important, reevaluate reevaluating our why, what we yeah. want to do. Yeah, and, that's and awesome. Know. Even even when we were doing like twice a week though, there there would be like two days a week where there was like for sure we were going to film something mm -hmm. and it was like a few hours of that day. Like it was, that's awesome. We knew well, every think, Monday and Friday we were going to do that. You know, I think that's such a good point though, that you bring up is like slowing down and like asking yourself the why I actually yeah. just did a devotional with some girls the other day. And I was talking about how last week, so I just joined Christian's mom's tennis league, which is hilarious. And it's like all of these like sweet moms playing tennis and um, they're all older, you know, because it's like more middle aged women, moms playing tennis. And I joined the league. And it's been, a, it was a blast, but it was kind of funny. So I go out and everyone's telling me, like, oh, Sadie, like, you're playing the best girl in the league. You're playing Kim. And it was like this big thing that I'm playing Kim. <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, okay, like, how good can Kim be? Like, okay, like, I'm in my 20s. I play tennis. This, this is going to be fine. <laughs> I, see, I see Kim and her, and her partner. I'm thinking, I got this. Y'all, they, like, destroyed me. They had me. Got no, I got whooped, okay? Like, and the funny thing is, Kim didn't even break a sweat. And I'm over there, like, sweating. And I can't breathe. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is bad. So I look at my partner at one point in the match because it was doubles. And I just told her, I was like, hey, like, we got to slow the game down. Like, first of all, I can't breathe. Second of all, like, they're gaining so much momentum on us. And, like, you know how whenever somebody starts doing good in something and it's, like, they're just, like, you can't stop them. I mean, they're just on a roll. It was kind of like that. And I was like, maybe if we slow it down, we can like fix the problem. So we slowed it down. She like, I like she needed to tie her shoe. She fixed her shoe. I stretched it out a little bit and we got back to play them. Well, we still didn't win, but it did just help us like reposition. And I was like, and the, it's the same way in life sometimes where it's like, there will be moments where you just need to slow the game down a little bit, you know, like yeah, maybe something's catching momentum and it's not a good thing. Or maybe, you know, you're getting tired, you're getting worn out, you're having a little bit of a struggle to breathe. Well, like it's okay to take a second and get things in place to be able to do, be the best version of yourself and continue on. And, you know, y'all seem to be doing that in certain things and saying like, Hey, like let's, let's slow the game down a bit. Like let's restructure some things and re ask yourself why and, get our position and our footing right again and then you're moving forward in the best way and i think you know in the culture we live in life goes 100 miles per hour and everyone's running and full speed ahead and it's like man if i stop then how am i going to catch up and it's like just remember like you're running your own race and you know we always say be like a race horse put your blinders on run your race not the person's beside you and be okay with taking some time to get your footing so i think that's such good advice in and of itself that y'all take that time to do that um well we're gonna start wrapping up soon but before i do cole we have to ask you about your spider bite because mm, yeah that was epic Thick. like christian said um he's been your dm buddy we've been talking about that spider bite because <laughs> i feel like that's like everyone's like low-key fear that they would like get bit by a spider and well, that I feel was like gnarly your fear and dream like dream and like <laughs> a weird spider man <laughs> yeah because like because you think like am i gonna develop some kind of like cool superpower yes i've I and like say, thought about that there are side effects positive side effects that have come from the spider bite so is there really Oh yeah, yeah. The the rumors are true. They, they I think Spider Man is actually based off of a true story. Um, after my <laughs> fight, but no. Oh I, my I, gosh. Yeah, essentially, if people don't know, I was in Florida, 
Um, and as you guys saw, I was kind of sharing it over my Instagram story because it was just insane to me. But I was sitting in my, in my friend's back house, and there were some cobwebs in the corner, and we were joking about some of the spiders that we saw. Like It was me and like four other buddies staying in this back little back house that he, he my friend built himself. And we saw the spiders, didn't think much of it. Um, we slept the first couple of days fine. And then the final day, I wake up to fly home early in the morning, and I feel something on my face. And uh, I look in the mirror and I see like two little bumps and like a, it's like just like slight, slight swelling. And I'm thinking like, there's no way like, you know, there's no way I got bit. And and other than that, I guess hurting, but I, I don't feel too bad. And I, I get on the plane and this thing's just like growing pretty fast. Where I, I'm thinking, is it just like a zit, w whatever else? Like I, I I took picture documentation and it's slowly growing. And by the time I get home, which is like a four hour flight. Savannah like really notices this, this thing on my face and it's not just like a bump like rotting my skin away where it's like scabbing really bad oh my god the skin is like rotting away but the bump hasn't had gotten too big and I, I kind of told like yeah po I'm pretty positive I got bit by a spider and um essentially within like two or three days this thing was like literally the size of my ear right under my ear and <laughs> oh, like, like my it wasn't god. just a bump it was like mainly scabby and like so very bad. like lots of pus coming out of it and, yeah. and, and and i thought that like maybe this spider bite had now gotten infected because it wasn't just like and then little baby spiders started coming out of his face uh, it laid eggs in my face wait little, no Yes. So, no. I'm just kidding. We're just kidding. No, but oh, okay. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, it was, but that, that didn't happen. Cool. But everything else up to now, too. But luckily, I have a wife who made me go in because if it wasn't for Savannah, I probably just would have like. Which is so. Which is. So I, I would have tried popping it, and they tell you don't pop it. For any of our kids, he's the first one to be like, oh no, oh she has something on her finger. Let's take her in. But yeah. <laughs> for him, he's like, no way am I going in. I'm like, this thing is huge. You have. Dude. Yeah. I saw you post that and I was like, I wish I was like that, where I was like, oh, I'm not gonna go in. I would be like, I would have like landed and gone straight to the like ER or something dramatic. <laughs> well, well like, you, you look it up and no, I, I guess nobody's died of a black widow bite in the US in like 10 years. So whenever I looked that up, I was like, okay, either I'm making history or I'm surviving. <laughs> you know? So, oh my gosh well i'm so I glad that you survived i survived it yeah I'm not you were a survive. survivor and maybe the next spider-man and so wait so yeah what are, what are some of the positive side effects because i'm actually kind of like interested christian yeah well now he can fly yeah it, it's weird yeah I, wow. I, can, I can just like i can hover like two inches off the ground that's it though i can't fly high. You, you can crawl up walls yeah. it's a slight hover <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's hilarious oh you guys are so awesome honestly uh, we really do look up to y'all in a lot of ways and just think your family's awesome i um my family you know has done a lot in tv and tv is you know um kind of crazy sometimes and there's a lot out there and so we're always thankful for anybody just putting out such a positive light and y'all do that beautifully so thank you for pressing past some of the mean things that people have done and probably you know, from our experience, it's scary things people have done and, you know, just trusting God with your life and the things that y'all do because it's awesome and it spreads. And so I know the people who are listening can't talk, but I'm sure each of them would say thank you for just your example and everything as your family. So we love you guys. We are so for the LeBrant family and thanks for joining me on the audio room. Thank you so well, we much. Love you guys we likewise. love you guys. Thank you for having us. This was awesome. They're so awesome. Such a good example to me and I hope for you too. Hope you enjoyed this podcast and I will talk to you next week.